This video is sponsored by Squarespace. Whether you need a domain, website or online store, make it with Squarespace. In this video, I'm going to show you three ways to create 3D lettering in Procreate on the iPad Pro. So the first technique uses the motion blur from the adjustments panel, but first we just need to duplicate our work. So we're left with three identical pieces. We're going to focus on the middle one first, so hide the other two by pressing the tick box. This is where the 3D element is going to be produced. So what we need to go is go to this magic wand icon, which is the adjustments panel. Third one down, motion blur. And as you see, when I move my pencil across the screen is that you can see it blurs in certain directions. What we want is going up towards the top left, but it doesn't matter if you go ahead towards the bottom right, it still acts the same. But as you can see at the top there, you've got the figures, we want about 30% of that blur. So it needs to be rough. It can be bigger if you want it to be bigger, but for now we're just gonna go with that. So once you've done that, go to your layers, click on the thumbnail, and where it says select, click on that. Go to your brushes. We need a really big brush for this. Um, the monoline at full brush size isn't big enough, so we're gonna duplicate that by swiping and clicking you duplicate. There we go. Click on it again and go to the general tab along the bottom and just bring the size limit right up to max. Now we've got this really big brush that all I use it for is just doing this edit, this part. Select color, just gonna use a bright pink for now, so easy to see, and then just go over it. Uh, deselect it by pressing the S selection tool. And then we're gonna bring back the top layer and with the middle layer selected, going to click on the arrow and then bring it down so it fits nicely where the white layer is. And if you want to refine the movements, just tap on the screen in the direction you want to go. So that's the 3D element. We're going to make the shadow. So we've got some light coming over from this direction. I'm going to create a shadow coming off this side. So hide the top two and bring up the third one. I'm going to do the same process again adjustments, motion blur, but this time we're gonna go in a different direction. We're gonna go for this way. And we want about roughly 40%. And again, it, you can have it go really huge or small, but for now we go roughly 40%. Click on the layers, click on the thumbnail, hit select. Now we want a black brush for this. Go over it again. Deselect, bring up the other layers. And also we want to do is click on the N, which brings up our opacity, bring it down to about 20%, 15-20%. Select multiply, click on the arrow to move it, and just bring it down in line there. And that's nearly done. We can just add a bit more uh, depth and a bit more texture to this uh, by adding a darker color. So if the light's coming here, there's gonna be lots of areas where it's much darker on that, on that pink. So we select a uh, darker shade. So we've got this sort of pinky purple. Uh, now a new function that's coming with Procreate 4.2 is Clipping Mask, which is like one of my favorite tools. And so what we wanna do is click on the plus, have a new layer click on the thumbnail and select clipping mask. So what this means is that everything I do on that layer will be um, restricted to the shape of the layer below. So I go and choose a brush from sketching called bamboo chalk, bring down the opacity of that to about 50% and the size to about 25% of its max. And then I'm just gonna go around shading areas. Like this bit here would be much darker than this side here. And then as I come around the corner, I really gently press the pencil so it fades off. So I'm gonna go through that now. Uh, I'll time lapse it so you can see where I put the shadows. But when you come to do your own, it's, it's up to you what you think looks nice, but just remember where the light source is coming and where you think the shadows might fall. Thank you. 
So there you go, we have, that's the motion blur technique, that's the technique I probably use the most and gives us the, the best results. If you found the first method too complicated, then this method is much easier, but unfortunately takes a lot longer. So first of all, you want to duplicate uh, the layer three times again, turn off the top and the bottom one. The middle one again is gonna be our 3D element. Uh, we wanna color this the color of our shadow. So the one way of doing it is clicking on the thumbnail and selecting alpha lock. So we just color the object itself. And I'm gonna give it a light gray color. And then turn off alpha lock, duplicate that layer select the bottom of those two layers and then choose the arrow so we can move it. And this is how we're going to determine how long our shadow is. So once we're happy, go back to our layers and then merge these two together by clicking on the top of the two layers and selecting the thumbnail and go merge down to create one solid object. And grab a small one layer brush and then we're going to join the edges remove these little gaps. This is where the time consuming element comes in, going around the whole word, joining the edges. And if you had a much longer word than just three letters, it would take you a lot longer to do. So once we've done that, as we can put, we make the top visible again, we can see Got our 3D element, and now to create the uh, shaded cast with light coming from this direction again, turn off the top two, just bring up the bottom one, and we want to color that black like I did previously. So select the layer, alpha lock, color it, turn off the alpha lock again, duplicate it. Select the bottom one, and this is how far we're going to create the cast. Do merge those two together, and then again with a monolo brush, we are going to join those edges. Once we're done, reduce the opacity again, multiply, bring back the other two layers and just position it in the right place. And there we have the second method of three lettering. A lot easier to understand, but as I said, a lot more time consuming. With this final method, we're going to utilize the power of drawing assist and drawing guides to make a more tapered 3D lettering. So what we want to do is bring up those guides. So go to the spanner, hit canvas, turn the drawing guides on. It will default to the grid version. Edit those drawing guides, go to perspective, there won't be anything there and it's asking us to tap to create a vanishing point so just tap anywhere and then what we want to do is move it so that the lines line up with the edge of our lettering once happy you press done now go to your layers Duplicate this twice and turn off the top layer. Select the bottom one, click the arrow, and then we're gonna pinch and zoom, pinch and zoom, pinch together to reduce the size and bring it down in line, following the lines either side. Once we're happy with the position, Go back to your layers panel, select the middle one, click on it, merge down. So we create one object, click on it again, 
and click Drawing Assist. So now, when we select a brush, when we draw, it will follow the guides and give us a straight line. So we join up all these edges like we had done in the previous one. Once you've done the edges, then fill the whole shape in. Sometimes it's easier if you turn off the drawing assist. Once that's done, colour it. So I'm going to give mine a red. Click on it, alpha lock. Bring up the top. And then we're going to add some shadow, turn off our block, create a new layer and then clipping mask, find a darker shade, get the bamboo chalk and then go around giving it some texture. Once you're uh, gone over it with, with some texture, turn off the drawing guides. And then just to add one more element, we're going to give it a shadow underneath. So duplicate the top layer, hold and drag it to the bottom, and turn that black alpha lock. over it, turn off the alpha lock, get the arrow, bring it downwards, and reduce it in size, so it's just a bit smaller than the bottom of the shape. And then going to the effects, click Gaussian Blur, blurring about 35%. And layers, multiply and reduce the opacity. And there we have the third and final uh, way of doing 3D lettering. There you go, guys. I hope you found that useful. If you've got any questions, then leave them in the comment section below. And I'd like to thank Squarespace again for sponsoring this video. If you need a new website or domain name, they really are a fantastic platform. I've been using them for the past five years, ever since I first set up my lettering business. I needed somewhere where I could display my portfolio of work that was easy to set up and manage, and Squarespace has been perfect for this. They have beautifully designed templates which make your work look amazing, and a super simple user interface which helps updating your website really easy. And if, for some reason, you get stuck, they have award-winning 24-7 customer support to help you out. So start your free trial now by going to squarespace.com and when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com forward slash Ian Barnard to save 10% off your first purchase of a domain or website.